Welcome back guys, in this video I will be comparing the performance, image quality and input delay of official FSR 3.1, DLSS enabler mod FSR 3.1, LSFG 2.3 and AFMF2, frame generation techniques in God of War, Ragnarok. I will be testing the game on my ROG LA. and I have the set one extreme variant of this device. Now practically speaking, you should not be using any FSR 3 mods in this game. Official FSR 3.1 frame generation implementation works very nicely in Ragnarok. The game features one of the best implementations of the official FSR 3.1 upscaler. The upscaled image using the quality preset looks clean. I did not observe any shimmering around the vegetation, no ghosting around the character models. But I did observe some minor texture shimmering in the reverse stream during fast visual motion. It's a bit difficult to spot it on ROG LS small screen. The LSS enabler mod is completely free so there is no harm in trying it out. It will be replacing DLSS frame generation with FSR 3.1 frame generation. At launch, DLSS frame generation was not working. This bug has been fixed via the latest patch. LSFG is a universal frame generator that works on any GPU. It's included with a paid application called Lossless Scaling that sells on same store for around $7. US AFMF2 is AMD's driver level implementation of frame generation. Does not rely on any game data. Can be enabled from Adrenaline software. In order to use AFMF2 on your ROG LA, you need to download the latest beta AMD GPU driver. That driver is optimized for God of War Ragnarok. First, I'll show you DLSS Enabler setup. I'll be using the latest beta 10 version of DLSS Enabler. I'll give the link to this website in the description of the video. Scroll down, expand asset section, download the exe file, beta 10. Now I'll open the games directory where you need to install DLSS Enabler. Select the game in your Steam library, right click manage, browse local files. This is the games install directory. Copy the directory from here. Now go to downloads, execute DLSS enablers exe file, there it is. I accept, next, next paste the games directory here, next, check the first option install as a version .dll file. Check this box next to enable support for AMD and Intel GPUs. Ally comes with Radeon 780M GPU. Next, install. Wait for the process to complete. There you go and check this box. Finish. Open the games directory again. Now open nvngx.inf file. There it is. Just set generator to FSR31. FSR 3.1 file save reflects on this mod uses XCSS version 1.3 upscaler by default on PCs with non RTX GPUs like ROG LA. Now I'll show you LSFG settings just launch lossless scaling application from Steam. Not using any of lossless scaling's upscaling algorithms, LSFG version 2.3 selected using LSFG's X2 mode, it will try to double the FPS. Not using LSFG's Performance mode, clip cursor setting checked. Sync mode default max frame latency 1. Draw FPS setting enabled, capture API TXGI. And that's it. Settings, hotkey for enabling LSFG, control alt NS. Status administrator setting checked. Minimize the application. For Ragnarok, I'm using a 30 watts manual profile, all three power values set at 30 watts. 900p resolution. CPU boost disabled. Connected my GULI kit KK3 Max Gamepad to LIVA Bluetooth mode. UMA buffer size set to 6 GB. BIOS version 441. Using a custom afterburner overlay to show you the performance metrics. In game settings, display mode set to full screen. Using the quality preset of FSR 3.1 upscaler. Base resolution 1056 by 592. Frame generation disabled for the time being. First, I'll show you the base performance. Shadow settings set to low, rest under settings are set to medium. Film grain and motion blur strength set to nil. Same thing for ambient camera sway and camera shake. I'll conduct a test in a very demanding area. Sort of fine. Air performance is limited by both CPU and GPU. There's Kratos and Atreus. Yeah, hair FPS is very variable. 35 to 50. <laughs> And here if you drop down to around 40, see. Can observe the choppiness. 
39 to 60 fps hitting the gpu bottleneck show you some combat as well fps again drop down to around 37 33 that's enough now i'll be testing dlss enabler just set up scalar to dlss using its quality preset frame generation set to dlss fg apply the setting reload the same sequence i'll just switch to dlss enablers fsr 3.1 upscaler open optiscaler mod menu by pressing the insert keyboard key yeah Upscaler drop down bar, XCSS is selected from here. Select FSR 3.1, then click on apply. Upscaler change, save INI, close. Okay, here FPS is close to 70. Wow, frame generation is working. Can observe the added amount of smoothness, but I am also observing some graphical artifacts around Kratos character model. Check out the Input response. Input delay is not a problem. Throw the axe. Be good. I like Thor Zammer. We may be able to fix these graphical artifacts using some tools to disable the post processing effects. Better to just use the official FSR 3.1 implementation. Yeah, here FPS is a bit variable. Show you some combat as well. In that sequence, FPS dropped down to around 33. She was a friend to the giants. 52 FPS. So very good performance using DLSS enabler. FSR 3.1 frame generation. Now I'll be using LSHG graphical artifacts around Kratos. Disable frame generation. Set upscaler to FSR 3.1 using its quality preset. Press LSHG's hotkey, Control Alt and S. Yeah, it's working. You can see its FPS counter in the top left corner. Reload the same sequence. We are in. Base FPS dropped down to around 28. FPS with frame generation close to 56. Can observe the added amount of smoothness. Frame generation is definitely working. Unfortunately, Kratos head is flicking very aggressively. Can't ignore this graphical artifact. I'll just switch to LSFG's performance mode. I was expecting this graphical artifact as the base FPS is close to 30 performance mode enabled this should help in increasing the base fps at the cost of image quality more aggressive graphical artifacts yeah base fps increased to around 37 still not enough i'm observing some cobble textures around the left and right edges of the display so would not recommend using lsfg on raw gala see cobble textures around the left edge show you some combat smoothing effect is definitely present near the zip line fps dropped down to around 31 the base fps game is still running smoothly So very good smoothing effect applied by LSFG, unfortunately it also caused very aggressive graphical artifacts, especially around Kratos head. Now I'll be testing AFMF2, disable LSFG, open adrenaline, adrenaline settings, vsync enable, vsync disable, that's it. Just enable AFMF2 from here. Status active, search mode set to high. This will prevent frame generation from getting disabled during fast visual motion. Performance mode set to quality. I'll disable afterburner overlay, switch to adrenaline's performance overlay. There it is. 
I'll show you the base FPS using AMD's latency meter. Press Alt Shift and L keys together. There is the base FPS. It shows the latency values as well. Unfortunately, latency values are not working properly. So I'll just stick to the FPS counter. Yeah, base FPS is close to 30. FPS is frame generation around 65. Can observe the added amount of smoothness. Okay, some minor flickering is going on around Kratos head. Very difficult to observe this flickering on LS small display. Flickering effect was more aggressive when I was using LSFG. You can definitely use AFMF2. Smoothing effect is present. 60 to 70 FPS. Games heard elements are not flickering. This area is demanding. 70 to 80 FPS. Show you some combat. Frame generation lag value around 15 milliseconds only. Zip line, base FPS dropped down to around 32, 64 FPS with frame generation. And I was using TLSS enabler, FPS has dropped down to around 55. So it seems AFR2 comes with a slightly lower overhead. Sixty to seventy FPS here. Now I'll be using official FSR three point one implementation. Disable AFMF two off and stick with AMD's performance overlay. Frame generation set to AMD FSR FG. We are in. Yeah, here FPS is close to sixty with frame generation not observing any flickering around creator's head no posting effect image quality is looking very clean definitely the best looking image quality among all of the frame generation techniques show you some combat input delay is not a problem controls are very responsive Zip line, 61 FPS, 56 FPS, 55 FPS, roughly the same performance as TLSS enabler. Now 60 to 70 FPS. I am done testing the game. Both TLSS enablers FSR 3.1 and the official FSR 3.1 had roughly the same performance but TLSS enabler exhibited some graphical artifacts around Kratos character model. Very aggressive graphical artifacts were observed when using LSFG. Kratos head was flickering. AFMF2 produced some minor graphical artifacts around Kratos head. The head was flickering. A bit difficult to observe it on Allies display. With LSFG, some garbled textures were also present around the left and right edges of the display. Input delay was not a problem with any of these frame generation techniques. AFMF2 and the performance mode of LSFG seem to be slightly smoother than official and DLSS enablers FSR 3.1 implementation. Taking into consideration all of the parameters like performance, image quality and input delay, I would recommend using the official FSR 3.1 implementation in this game. That's it for the video guys, I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching. And have a nice day.